I've always said this, you can make more money, right? You can make more money, you can make more friends. The one thing you cannot make more of is time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I believe every minute that we have, every second we have on this earth has got to be spent doing the Father's business. And that's regardless of what sector you're in, regardless of what position you hold. I think it's so important to even clarify that because a lot of times people think, oh, I'm not in ministry unless I'm a pastor, an evangelist or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you are in ministry if God decided that you were necessary for yeah. creation. Yes. Right? Yeah. Are you breathing? If you're breathing, <laughs> then God can use you. Yeah. So he's I- He's not done. He's not done, yeah, until the, you take that last breath. It's a burden of mine to help people reconstruct, which is how they present the gospel yeah. in their evangelism efforts. Yeah. One, because I used to work for a nonprofit ministry in Chicago where I was like a, a mentored mentors that mentored at risk teens. Mm -hmm. And one of the interview questions I always gave is, what's the gospel? And it was amazing to me yeah. that so many of these people who all grew up in church did not know the gospel. Yeah. They would often say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I'm not even kidding. That was the response, wow. which told me that they are a part of yeah. churches and have grown up in churches that have never taught them how to articulate the gospel, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which is important because yeah. it's by faith in the gospel that we come to know Jesus. And so I think how we articulate yes. matters. Yes, totally. we should have the character, but we also need the content. Yeah. The content right. being... Jesus, not morality, yes. not so legalism, right. Yes. Yes. Right. not just hell, not right. judgment, right. <laughs> but a person. Evangelism is so important uh, because it's what we have been called to do. In Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said to us that uh, we are to go ye therefore uh, and make disciples of all nations. Um, that is a, an imperative for believers. It's not optional. It's not something that we should do if we have the time. Um, we believe that Jesus uh, gives us the gift of eternal life. And if we truly believe that, then we should want that for other people. So evangelism is putting into practice what Jesus called us all to do in the Word of God. I think it's so important, like just even listening to you, like the bigger churches get, you know, so now it's in the, the thousands and the bigger the platform that I'm entrusted with. I've had to be really mindful to do that, yeah. Yeah. like to go for the one. And so I remember this girl. She came at the end of a message and she handed me a bag and she said, I don't want to be an addict anymore. Wow. And inside this bag were all the drug paraphernalia. I mean, and so handed that off. And then I just oh, felt like favorite. God said to me, she's your one. Wow. Yeah. I want you to disciple her. So good. You take her mm -hmm. on this journey now. Right? And then the more you walk with people, then I find out she's in the sex industry, which is why she was you know, struggling with the drugs and then not just the sex, but a really yeah. dark side of it. And yeah. I just remember sitting there, no shocked face, just loving her. And slowly years, you know, she just began to take steps and she would come, okay, I did those three things. What do I do next? Mm. Like she was a true wanting to grow. And now yeah. she shares her story. And yeah. so just having the privilege of walking somebody, yeah. Yeah, there's just nothing better than that. I think... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where we just get so yeah. focused on the big that yep. we miss the one. I, I just I, yeah. I remember a story that Arthur Blessed, who carried the cross around the world, he yeah. carried the cross to every island nation, to every everywhere you can possibly walk, he's carried the cross. And he tells the story about God told him to go out in the middle of the street. Now I don't think anybody was coming, you know, it was very barren. He's just walking him in the cross. And he said, I want you to lay your cross down and I want you to lay flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. And he did, and God said, I want you to give up all of your dreams, every one of them, everything that you think you're called to do, I want you to give it all up. And he said, I want you to make your ministry just as big as the next person you see. Yeah, mm -hmm. Just make it about the next person you see, no matter who it is, no matter where they're from, no matter anything. Yep. Just make your ministry as big. And I've always kept that in my heart. Yeah. To where you can look into a camera, because that's what God's called us to, yeah, yeah. to look in a camera with however many people and talk to the one. one. Yep. If there's that's just right. one, you know, that's what Jesus went after. He went after that one. I think about, you know, John 3, 16, most famous scripture ever. Um, and, but when you, when you break it down, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He gave his one and only son. And I think about that and I'm like, number one, Love gives. Like that is the indicator of love. Love doesn't take, love doesn't wait for you to come to it. Love meets you where you are. But then secondly, 
Love gives what's precious. Mm. You know, God didn't say, let me go make a son and then I'll send that one. Yeah. Or God didn't say, hey, uh, son over there, one of 3,000, you go. Like he literally was like, you know what? I'm sending the one and only son. And so I think as a church, we have to be introspective enough to ask ourselves, one, are we giving? Mm. Are we actually going where the people are meeting their needs? But then two, are we actually giving what matters and what's valuable and what's mm. precious? Or are we giving out of surplus? Mm. Mm. Like I'll give what I have left over, but I'm not gonna give what's what gonna cost actually cost me, me yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I just think in one aspect, the Salvation Army got it right. Yes. You know, they met the felt needs of people before right. they actually ever spoke the yeah. word. Right. So I just think the church, that's our job. Is give them to... what they want so you can eventually give them what they need. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, get your hands dirty. Yeah. Reaching the community, loving people. It's like gathering to be equipped to go. To go yeah. out, yeah. Gather, celebrate, be equipped. But it, it requires slowing down enough to observe. I think where we oftentimes miss opportunities to minister to people is we're just so busy. Mm. It's like we have our own agenda, our own schedule, our own calendar, to the point where we see hurt around us and instead of being moved by it, we become annoyed by the inconvenience. Yes. Mm. You know, That's where we have to just pause and be like, all right, Lord, I see this need. How do you want to use me in this situation? Mm -hmm. Sometimes ministry isn't somebody coming to you and saying, you need to do this thing. Sometimes ministry is just you noticing that there's a need mm -hmm. to be met mm -hmm. yeah. and being willing to create the space and the capacity in your calendar to do yeah. it. So Basic. I think this is the church's finest hour because yeah. There's never been more pain and heartbreak and suffering oh and confusion on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there has also never been more access to the truth of who God yeah. is. So true. And so this is the time for the church, the global church. Yeah. The bride of Christ. The bride of Christ to actually do what we're supposed to, to shine. do. Shine. Mm -hmm. Shine. It, this is our time. Yeah. Yes. Right? Let's go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> go, Jackie. Yes, go, Jackie. Yes, I'm trying go, to go. Jackie. Go, Link. I wanna pray for you that God would instill within you a passion to go after the people who are hurt and who are lost. So God, for everyone who is watching now, Lord, for those of us who may have become complacent in our faith, God, we have uh, become very comfortable with our church body. We've become comfortable with our routine. I pray, God, that you would shift us out of it. Help us to have eyes to see the people in our lives, Lord, who do not know you as savior so that we can become a witnessing tool. We can become an evangelistic tool in your hand to bring them into faith. I pray right now, God, that we wouldn't do this just every other week or every other month, but that it will become a daily practice because that is how we're gonna build your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.